the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, he and Elisha went, were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here. The Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you, Elisha replied. And so the two went on together. Fifty of the guild prophets followed, and when the two stopped at the Jordan, they stood facing them at a distance. Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water which divided, and both crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask for whatever I may do for you, before I am taken from you. Elisha answered, May I receive a double portion of your spirit? You have asked something that is not easy, Elijah replied. Still, if you see me taken up from you, your wish will be granted. Otherwise, not. As they walked on conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. When Elisha saw it happen, he cried out, My father, my father, Israel's chariots and drivers. But when he could no longer see him, Elisha gripped his own garment and tore it in two. Then he picked up Elijah's mantle that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Wielding the mantle that had fallen from Elijah, Elisha struck the water in his turn and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When Elisha struck the water, it divided, and he crossed over. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of children of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. You screen them within your abode from the strife of tongues. Love the Lord, all you his faithful ones. The Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requites those who act proudly.
loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance, so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to others to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father, who sees what is hidden, will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus addresses three significant acts in the life of the devout Jew in our gospel today, namely almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. We as Christians are charged to ask ourselves, why do I do those things? Is it so that others can see me? Maybe it's just my nature, seeing others and different situations as Christ sees them and so I end up being a true disciple. The reward is not for here, brothers and sisters. The reward is for later in heaven. Our action shouldn't be a source of noise, so to speak, to get notice. I'm going to focus here for a few minutes on praying. Jesus mentions today the gospel about going to the inner room. This is not Jesus recommending that there is no need to go to Mass on Sunday, for example. Having entered, if you like, that inner room of the heart, we bring to God in community all that we are and all that we offer. The inner room must set the scene for communal prayer. We also hear about fasting. That said, my mind goes back to Lent and Ash Wednesday. How many people receive ashes truly as a reminder of their mortality and their need to turn away from sin and return to the gospel? From my experience, and I hope I'm not making a sweeping judgment here, it's more about getting the ashes to prove I went to church. The Mass or service doesn't seem that important. It's the ashes. It's as if the ashes are more important than Christ present in the sacred scriptures and above all in the Holy Eucharist. That's the kind of hypocrisy Jesus takes aim at 
in today's gospel reading. In, in ways, today's gospel reading reminds me of that famous quote by Abraham Lincoln, and in the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years. So how will we be remembered, truly? What will we bring to God as gift? Eleanor Powell put it well when she said, what we are is God's gift to us. What we become is our gift to God. Today's gospel reading challenges us to be real. Sins, wounds, and all. Will the real you stand up? Let us pray. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop Gregory Amen, Bishop Fernand Cherry, Archbishop Hughes, all of our priests, our deacons, our villages, for our seminarians, and those who may be contemplating studies for the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray, Lord, for our president and leaders of governments throughout the world. We pray, too, for our families in these days, so that there may be peaceful hearts and safety for all peoples. We pray, indeed, for the safety of our military, our police, and first responders. We pray to the Lord. We pray, too, for the safety of all of those in the medical field. We pray especially for our doctors, nurses, all of those who work in hospitals and caregivers, who look after people in various homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those that we bring here in our hearts, maybe someone who is ill in some way or maybe near death, those maybe recovering from the surgery, and so we pray for strength in mind, body, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we pray, Lord, through the intercession of Our Lady of Calm Succor, that the Lord may indeed keep us safe during these during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Anne, St. Joachim, Blessed Francis Xavier Silas. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, 
Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy Son of God, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy Son of God. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore be gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. <coughs> Do this in memory of Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Gregory our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb.
screen this morning, I will pray the spiritual communion prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.